Hello and welcome to Study with Sudhir, your digital classroom. I hope you are all focused on the English literature examination. Uh, this particular video lesson is going to focus only on William Shakespeare. Okay. The Bard of Stratford upon Avon. In fact, I had gone there in 2001. In fact, there is a bust of Rabindranath Tagore, Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore, in Stratford upon Avon, the birthplace of William Shakespeare. The house of Shakespeare is maintained uh, even now, and it's a great tourist destination. I mean, Great Britain really knows how to kind of promote, market, and make tourist destinations into a profitable business. So, anyway, let's not digress. Let's talk about the Merchant of Venice. Now, how do you study for Merchant of Venice? And this is specifically for students who have not studied much till now, who are looking to kind of select some particular acts and scenes because they feel studying the what over 38, 39 odd scenes is going to be a little difficult. So, let's focus on 10 scenes which I think you should do. Anything less than these 10 scenes, already cutting it from 38 down to 38, 39 to about 10. If you so there is a particular risk factor involved. Let me be very clear. Do not think that, you know, if I do only 5, will it work for me? I am not sure. I cannot give you a guarantee. But with these 10, you can definitely do one answer comfortably. Sometimes even two, because if the two questions come from these 10 scenes. Okay, so this is what I'm going to say. So I have actually put out a community post on this, but many of you may not have seen it for, especially for those who have subscribed to the channel very recently. Act 1, all the three scenes. Because they are the introduction scenes of Antonio, Portia, Nerissa, Bassanio and Shylock. So Act 1, all the three scenes. Act 2, scene 1, which is the introduction scene of the Prince of Morocco. Act 2, scene 7, which is the casket scene involving Morocco important. Act 2 scene 9 involving the casket scene of Aragon, the Prince of Aragon, important, important mark my words. Act 3 scene 2 the casket scene of Bassanio, important. Uh, Act 3 scene 1 which is the um, uh, conversation between Tubal and Shylock. Because it kind of gives you a glimpse of Shylock and there are some important passages in this particular scene. So, Act 3, there are two scenes which I would highlight, Act Scene 1 and Scene 2. Uh, the court scene or the trial scene which is Act 4, Scene 1. The most important, the longest scene, we have done it in five parts. So, anyone who wants to understand it in great detail, please look at the video lessons. Very, very comprehensively done. Also, the final act 5, which is the ring scene, the culmination scene. So, these are the 10 scenes I would say you should ideally read in order to ensure that you are not taking too much of a risk as far as MOV is concerned. And those of you who have read MOV many times, those of you who have not read MOV so many times still now, please ensure that you revise MOV at least twice. MOV is not easy, the Shakespearean language does not make it easy. So, you do ensure that you revise it at least two solid times. Now, how do you answer questions which ask where is this scene set etc. Because sometimes they do ask you uh, questions as to for instance last year 2019 paper, this one is from uh, the uh, court scene. The first co uh, question is which is of three marks. Where is this scene set? Why was Portia there? So, why was Portia there will carry the two marks. But where is this scene set? You need to say that it is set in the Duke's court in Venice. Now, it is quite possible that at least as far as the casket scenes were concerned, uh, it's not enough to say that, you know, it is set in Belmont. You need to be very precise because that is how the keywords are. You need to say that this is in the room where the caskets are kept at Portia's home in Belmont. Okay, because caskets... Belmont and room will be your keywords. So, you need to ensure that it is very, very precise thing. Many scenes are set in the street in Venice. That's fine. But wherever a casket scene etc. is there, you need to be very precise in terms of the scene location because that's always asked in your question paper. Okay. It has been asked at least in one question in this particular thing. In another extract which was in 2019, it says describe Antonio's mood at the beginning of this scene. So, there also the, the expectation would be that you would kind of mention where is this particular scene set. Now, how you need to frame your answers. I had done a video uh, 
maybe a couple of weeks ago or three weeks ago on how do you approach a merchant of venus answer how can you make it very very comprehensive okay so please have a look at that video it will give you an idea about how to frame the answers as far as the merchant of venus is concerned that's an answer which is a 16 out of 16 kind of an answer so you know it's the most ideal answer that you can possibly get now let's look at some of the kind of questions that are asked you know the characters are mentioned but the you know in this particular case for instance last year the trial scene which has come the extract which has come the extract per se is not important at all if you look there is hardly anything very meaty or heavy duty as far as these lines are concerned but the questions that are asked are all revolving around that thing you know it kind of for instance it says how does Portia succeed in saving Antonio so unless you have done the entire play comprehensively you know exactly what has happened know many of the keywords you will not be able to do justice to this four marks answer you know how does Portia succeed in saving Antonio what does this reveal of her character you know so you need to talk about in great detail about what happened in the Duke's court you need to talk about the cleverness the legal acumen that Portia exhibited in the court how she kind of almost trapped uh, Shylock initially Shylock was very happy okay uh, he was praising Portia's legal acumen her sense of fairness sense of fair play but later on he realizes that the tables are slowly getting turned on him you know so how does Portia manage to do that you will be expected to write it in great detail including some of the keywords that is important I'm going on underlining that so when you read the play when you read how did Portia what was Portia saying it first of all she appealed to Shylock's mercy you know sense of mercy that he should show some mercy to the merchant of Venice that is Antonio and later on she says that well he has a good uh, case on his hands that he's absolutely correct right in demanding that he should get what he was promised to him in exchange for the 3000 ducats and later on she the kind of googly that she throws you know the kind of twist in the tail that really happens please look at the videos that will really help you but you will be expected to answer it in detail so unless you know the play in detail you will not be able to do that one student i forget the name uh, he said this morning that if i do only act one and act two is that enough now what will you do if you get a question like this right it may be your your extract may be from act one but suppose they kind of link it to act four and say how did Portia manage to save Shylock unless you have read act four and remember at least some of the keywords you will not be able to <coughs> do justice to this four mark kind of a question that is my only apprehension when you select even out of this 10 scenes is my only uh, problem area now it talks about what was the difference between Shylock and Antonio that the Duke was unable to resolve you know so you are basically being tested on your familiarity with the play that is what the examination is going to be all about okay now uh, or let's take the extract from act one scene one which came in 2019 it is an introduction scene but the four mark question which came here is about what does the above extract reveal of the relationship between Antonio and Bassanio mention one way in which this relationship was put to test later in the play hmm? so uh, again you need to kind of talk about you know what all happened in the play the ring scene and about the relationship between Bassanio and Antonio that is willing to forsake everything all those kind of things you need to bring in, into effect one thing that I forgot to put in the the other video that I have done about the tips uh, but I have obviously mentioned it in earlier videos which I have, we have done Merchant of Venice you generally are not asked an 8 mark question the 8 mark question generally is asked as far as the treasure trove stories are concerned and my position always has been try and avoid that 8 mark question because in 8 mark question you will be expected to add include a lot of keywords so in case if you are not able to include a whole lot of keywords an 8 mark question also you need to write a lot of stuff you know several points so it's a little dicey so any extract where you see an 8 mark question my suggestion to you would be to avoid it okay so this is as far as the treasure trove stories is concerned now last two points how do you prepare learn the keywords the more you quote from Shylock stony adversary you know those kind of you know the words which are used for Shylock phrases that are used for Antonio phrases that are used for Portia you know so learn a judge you know which Graciano keeps on taunting even Shylock uses that phrase so you need to keep quoting from things so for everyone write down 10 do that exercise today write down uh, 10 Key phrases for Shylock, Antonio, Bassanio, Portia. 
all four are enough these four are enough if you write that you will be able to include it in any kind of answer which you will get which you will attempt from merchant of venice okay write in your own language but we win shakespeare's quotes okay last one as i said make the points for all the principal characters that will take care of the four mark question or even the three mark question uh, write 10 points with keywords and once you have assured of an eye for instance i will give you an example of how you could talk about shylock what are the major characteristics of shylock and similarly you do for portia antonio bassanio as well okay it would help you to actually do for morocco and aragon also because if your casket scene comes it will help you to do for those two also okay for instance as far as shylock is concerned what do you need to know his desire for revenge hey his desire for revenge overshadowed overshadows his passion for money of course he is very passionate about earning money because he is a money lender by profession but his desire for revenge against antonio is kind of overshadowing even that passion for money scheming he is quite scheming because he sees an opportunity to trap antonio by lending money to bassanio because antonio is the one who is standing guarantee for that and he also is fully knowledgeable because he knows that antonio's ships are at sea so he knows that he is has undertaken a risk and he may be unable to repay the debt on time he is suspicious both of his servant as well as of his daughter he is confrontationist and he is not afraid he takes on the duke in the duke's court now that takes some calling you know to take on the judge inside the court uh, of uh, in venice itself uh, he does not feel intimidated he tells him that the prestige and the name of the city of venice is at stake he feels wrong and insulted by antonio you need to talk about all those things about how he had spat and spat on him that he insulted him he called him a dog you know all those things also you need to bring in in any uh, question that deals with the relationship between shylock and antonio you need to include all those things but despite all that he gets trapped by portia's cleverness you know portia is obviously too smart for him so he gets trapped by her initially he praises her before he realizes that she actually has led him into a trap he shows himself to be merciless and insensitive he does not care about the fact that antonio may actually bleed to death as a result of the pound of flesh being cut from his body he does not arrange for any doctor just because it is not mentioned in the uh, the title uh, the bond he is not merciful despite pleased by both the duke of Ven uh, venice as well as by portia he does not relent he is argumentative for every point put forth by the duke he offers a counter argument you know all that thing about the bagpipe and the um, the bats etc the rats etc so he uh, gives a counter argument so if you keep this kind of 10 points about each of these five six characters that will really help you that's the way to prepare for merchant of venice okay you could do similarly for antonio antonio what will you talk about the fact that you know he does not reveal his mind he does not reveal his mind to salarino and salarino right at the beginning of the first scene act 1 but he reveals it to bassanio the fact that shylock already knows about it his character his relationship with shylock his relationship with bassanio the fact that he wants him to write his epitaph you know the fact that he's always in a very despondent kind of mood you know he gives up rather easily he's not like portia who wants to who fights right till the end in order to save his life you know so all those kind of things but he is someone who kind of you know will do anything for friendship despite the fact he knows about this you know the the fact that bassanio is a bit of a spendthrift so you know if you write out all this kind of characterization with keywords appropriate keywords english literature merchant of venice you will take care of okay so that's as far as merchant of venice is concerned i hope many of your doubts have been cleared clarified and i hope you will do well but as i always say uh, don't cut out too many acts and scenes because you're only be increasing your risk factor because even if you get a see an extract from act 1 scene 3 of shylock pucha jayega about what happened later in the play also that's quite possible all the best to you with shakespeare with all the 10 poems and the 10 stories happy studying do well god bless you thank you